let's talk about the AMCAS application. So there's several things that you need to do before you start your AMCAS application. The first one, when it opens in early May, is get right on top of your transcripts. So let's write that up there. Transcripts are what I recommend people start with as soon as they're able to open up the application. So what happens is when you open up the application, you have to enter a lot of information, biographical information, school information, things like that. Once you've entered that, then you can download a transcript request form. And when you download that transcript request form, you send that to your school. Send it to them right away. You don't want your application to be delayed because AMCAS is waiting to receive a transcript. A part note here, and you can read more about this on the AMCAS instruction manual, but you need a transcript from any college you attended. Even if you took college courses in high school, you need to submit those transcripts. So keep that in mind. And you will need to enter those courses into the AMCAS application. Another important note about transcripts is when you are entering your grades and your courses into the AMCAS application, I really recommend having a printed transcript next to you and entering the information exactly how it appears on that transcript into AMCAS. That's going to save time later on when AMCAS has to verify and correct your application. Next one you need to be thinking about is letters. Letters of recommendation. You can actually submit letters of recommendation after you submit your AMCAS application, but ideally you wanna have all of your letters in the AMCAS application when you press submit. That way, when AMCAS goes through, they verify their, your information and they forward it to medical schools, all of that information, including those letters of recommendation, is sent right away to medical schools. So your application is complete. Very important part to do. Um, letters are discussed in another video. Please sh be sure to check that one out, but definitely try to get those in time. Before you sit down and start writing your AMCAS application and putting it in, I suggest concentrating next on the activities. So first, start by making a list of your activities. So we'll put this over here. This should be your preparation for AMCAS. Make a list of your activities, which brings us to here. You're allowed to enter 15 activities. So some people will have 20 activities that they wanna put in. You'll have to pick and choose which ones you wanna put in. Some of what people will only have 10. That's okay. I try not to recommend less than 10 activities. That can make your application look a little weak or it doesn't look like you're well-rounded enough. But if you have somewhere between, between 10 to 15 activities, that's kind of the sweet spot. Also, you don't need to enter all 15. I get a lot of people that will enter an activity that maybe they spent three hours on just to fill up all those 15 slots. You do not need to do that. Put activities that were significant to you and that actually you spent some time and commitment to them. So with each activity, there are several things you have to do. First, you have to classify the activity based on the activity type. So the AMCAS application has a drop down menu and you select the application type, or excuse me, the experience type. It can be research, clinical experience, volunteering, military, awards, etc. So first, you have to select the type. This seems kind of basic, but it is important because you want to make sure that the types of experiences you have are well-rounded. So let's say you have five research experiences, but only one clinical experience, but perhaps you, exp you classified clinical research under research. So you may want to take, think about reclassifying that under clinical experience. So it appears that you're more well-rounded and you've had experiences in all types of activities. Next, you'll have to enter a lot of contact information. Try to be as accurate as possible. Another area is going to be hours that you have to put here. So this is the total number of hours that you spent in that activity. This is, of course, your best estimate. Try not to inflate numbers, but try to make it accurate as possible. What I did and what I recommend doing is I would say, some people actually have very, very, very good record keeping and know exactly how many hours they've spent on a certain activities. What I actually recommend doing is think about your commitment. Maybe it was a four hour commitment every single week and you did it for two years. You can kind of estimate the number of hours pretty accurately based on that. 
So next is the description. So this is the important part. This is where This is where you actually get to write about what you did in this experience. So I wrote 700 here because you're allowed 700 characters for the description, and that's with spaces. So it turns out to be about a paragraph. So it doesn't give you a ton of room to really write about what you did, but what you wanna focus here is on a little bit about your responsibilities, what were your actual roles, in that activity, and then maybe spend one to two sentences on kind of a reflection or what you really gained from that activity. So for example, let's say this was physician shadowing. You could say, I shadowed X, Y, and Z doctors over so many days um, and in these specialties. And during this time, I really learned about different bedside manners and patient care techniques. So just maybe one or two sentences at the end to kind of reflect and bring it all together. Um, the descriptions should be taken seriously. This is a really big area where you're presenting yourself to admissions committees and what you have done. So make sure you take care and practice and preparation writing these. For three of the descriptions, you're allowed to expand to the most meaningful. So they allow you another about 1,300 characters, again, with spaces to expand on three experiences that you consider to be the most meaningful experiences. I suggest trying to think about these. Think about which experience were actually very significant to you. A couple things here. Make sure they were significant to you. I see a lot of people that say, well, I should pick a research, I should pick clinical activity, and I should pick a community service activity. Um, to make it seem very well-rounded. And while that's a good approach, if it wasn't actually particularly significant to you, I wouldn't suggest putting those experiences unless you actually have a lot to write about and you can really expand on their significance. Another thing here is to try to make this different than the, the description. So the description is going to be more about your actual roles, responsibilities, whereas the most meaningful experiences are gonna be more about what you learned, what you gain, a little bit more in depth response about it. Another important aspect is, do I have to have all three most meaningful experiences? And no, don't make a meaningful experience if it wasn't significant, as I said. I definitely suggest having at least two, but you don't need to go all three. And then finally, think about what medical schools, how they would view these. If you picked a most meaningful experience that was 25 hours, do you think that they would agree that this was particularly significant? Pick something that you've actually dedicated yourself and spent a lot of time on. Hopefully this kind of helps you start brainstorming and thinking about getting your AMCAS application ready. We'll talk about the personal statement in another video, which is a huge part of the AMCAS application. And also be sure to check out the documents as well, where we can provide you some help and examples on the AMCAS.